Hi, <clears throat> I'm Jason Walnowski. I'm from the MITRE Corporation, which is a uh, nonprofit, federally funded research and development center. Um, basically, everything I work on is open source, and it's on GitHub, and it's freely available for everybody, um, and including this project. So what I'm going to talk to you today um, is uh, two projects, um, but you can think of them as one, Cynthia and Synthetic Mass. So what is Cynthia? Uh, Cynthia is a synthetic patient simulation. Um, it's an open source, uh, basically, project that takes a patient and simulates them from the moment they're born to the moment they die. Um, there's all sorts of diseases they can get based on uh, prevalences and incidences. They'll progress through that disease. They'll get treatment of that disease. They'll have appropriate care plans. Um, and then we output that in uh, standard health record formats. And, it, and the goal is to have very realistic, but not real, synthetic patient data that we can flood the market with and then the community can use. So you can use high quality data um, at scale. And it's freely available. There's no, there's no um, restrictions on it or, or um, any sort of prohibitions like you'd have with HIPAA data or anything like that. So why are we doing this? Well, there's a high demand for EHR data sets. Some of you, uh, a lot of you probably here are doctors or vendors. You probably have access to all sorts of, of, of medical data. Well, most of the world doesn't. And there's a lot of people that want access to this data and they can't get it. Um, or if they can, they can buy it. Um, with, uh, from there's, there's providers who will de-identify uh, de data and sell you anonymized records, but they're pretty expensive. Um, and when you get the data, uh, typically it's, it's very dirty uh, and it's missing all sorts of stuff that you, you'd actually want to see. Of course, it carries all sorts of risks um, because there's been numerous publications that have shown um, there's all sorts of ways and it's been shown over and over again that you can re-identify uh, de-identify data, and then you're at risk of all sorts of uh, breaking the law. So, and then we needed this for our own projects. Like I said, we do a lot of open source work, and we just kept finding that we needed lots and lots and lots of data. And if you have gone to uh, any of the HL7 Fire Connectathons, you'll know that there's a lot of great servers out there, but typically they've got 20, 30, 40 patients on them, and that's not really enough. We want servers where there's millions, hundreds of millions of, of records that you can actually query and use. Um, so I'll take a step back for a second and talk about uh, the Cynthia architecture. How does it work? If you start on the left, uh, basically the inputs into this, we do a lot of research. We find uh, the clinical care maps that are either published in journals or provided by medical special societies. Um, and we combine that with insulin and prevalence statistics that we get primarily from the CDC. And we create, uh, in the center here, uh, basically uh, state machines. We call them disease modules. Um, basically, they're uh, state machines that have some little extra stuff in there, like um, there's different types of states, things like a condition is, is, is a state. Um, there's also different types of transitions. So there's probabilistic transitions. There's transitions that can be rule-based. Um, if I'm a smoker, I might have a... Um, a higher percentage chance of, of having some comorbidity, so it can take into account um, different rules. And then at the top, we take in uh, census data demographics. So uh, for us in the US, we can get census information from the US Census Bureau and other places. And we can get demographic stuff by the town, uh, by county, by state. And you can get things like ethnic, uh, gender, uh, age demographics, and we can take all of that and along with some conf a configuration file, which can have different settings on how the system will run. And basically, it'll create a, a, a world that will simulate all these patients. And every time step that the simulation iterates, it'll go through all of these state machines for each patient. And they'll, they'll progress in their disease. They'll get treatment in their disease. Um, and, and some of them will die, and new people will be born. And at the end, it out exports all this information. Uh, we support a variety of export formats. But the ones I want to highlight here, since it's an HL7 event, are uh, Fire S23 and um, CCDA. And we use some standard terminologies and stuff, um, except our uh, diabetic neuropathy, as uh, John pointed out earlier. Um, we use the wrong code system. Um, so anyway, that's how the architecture works. Um, these are the diseases we simulate. Um, I call them the two top tens. 
So uh, the top 10 reasons patients visit their primary care physician, of course, those uh, reasons are different if you're a man or a woman or an adult or a child, but we sort of aggregate into one, and these are the top 10 reasons most people go uh, to visit their primary care. And then um, the top 10 years of life lost, this is from the uh, 2015 version of the Global Burden of Disease, if people are familiar with that. And you'll notice that uh, some of these things are repeated. So in the top 10 reason patients visit their uh, primary care, number three is diabetes, and that uh, disease is also on the number eight on the years of life lost. So these are the things people go to the doctors most for, but also the things that kill people the most and are sorts of chronic uh, uh, diseases that affect us in the US. Um, this is an example of a, a, probably the most simple module in all of Cynthia, and it's appendicitis. <clears throat> and if you start at the top, and the black box, that says initial, and at the bottom black box, it says terminal. So there's an initial state, there's a terminal state. If you're familiar with state machines, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. The first thing that happens is it splits based on whether you're a man or a woman, because uh, your gender plays a, a, a probability in, in uh, um, how prevalent you might have appendicitis. Then there's some distributions about when you'll get it. Most people get it um, earlier or in the mid-age rather than later in life. And then there's, a, there's another distribution in there about whether your, appendicitis, your appendix will actually rupture or not um, before you go to the emergency room. And then there's different st states in there, things like condition onset and counter, um, that will basically annotate the medical record of this person as they're having their appendicitis event. Um, but like I said before, there's all sorts of different things in here uh, that you can do, like you can, you can um, check to see whether the person is a smoker, you can check to see what uh, socioeconomic status they have, you can check to see um, if they have other comorbidities, so you can, these things can get very complicated. Um, these are sort of the, it's, you're not meant to really read this other than to show the complexity of the disease models that we have as of uh, February, and that little red area at the bottom is uh, where the appendicitis module that I just showed you is, but this shows you sort of those two top 10 lists, sort of all the complexity in managing um, those diseases. Um, so what do we do? We generated a million patients. Uh, you can see that uh, here There's a, in, for the state of Massachusetts. Um, like I said, we needed a lot of data for our projects. Uh, I'm in Massachusetts. Um, so we, so actually in Massachusetts, there's about 6.8 or 7 million people, um, but we decided to simulate only a million of that to start, so we're at uh, one-seventh of the actual population. But we have the statistics for each of the towns um, um, according to, the, uh, at scale, uh, at that one-seventh scale for each of the different towns in terms of population, in, in terms of race, ethnicity, uh, gender, and all that, and, and as well as the disease prevalences um, in each of those towns. And you can browse through this, and there's different sort of lenses you can look at on this website, which is syntheticmass.mitre.org. And you, if you click into one of these towns, you can drill in, and you can actually start to load the patient list, and you can start looking at all these synthetic patients. Um, this is a view of one of these synthetic patients um, in Boston. Uh, you can see that uh, you can download the patient's data as fire JSON. You can get the CCDA XML. Also, if you're into direct, you could send yourself that message by direct if you wanted to. Um, you can also browse through these person's conditions. And there's actually a lot of stuff in the record that's not even shown on this UI. If you access the fire API, you'll get additional things like their care plan, uh, their encounters. Um, and there's other thing, procedures. Um, so basically, there's a lot of data that you can use uh, either as a patient by patient or at a population level. So our people have asked me, well, why are you doing it? What's what's you know uh, what's the long term view of this project? Um, so our long term vision for Cynthia is that uh, the stuff in sort of this blue area is this this is sort of Cynthia itself. And this little sort of orbiting planet here is Synthetic Mass, which is that sort of website where you can browse and access sort of this data. And also we output health records today. But what we want to do is we want to grow this so we have town simulation, state simulation. Basically, I want to create Synthetic USA, where I have 330 million synthetic patients, where uh, there's health records for all of them that are accessible to everyone. Um, 
and that we take into account all sorts of things like the physical environment, individual behaviors, their social, social circumstances, uh, different policies that the, the government may want to uh, lay down upon us, like uh, black grants or what have you, um, as well as sort of expand the base of these, uh, of the diseases. So, you know, these are my two top tens, but this is long, there's a very long tail of diseases. And of course, I want it to be um, representative. So if we come down to, um, you know, there's a higher, there's higher rates of diabetes in the South than there is in the rest of the country. So you'd want that to be representative in each of the different locations. So that's kind of where we want to go. And then we have all that data freely available for people to access. Um, this is a list of some of our collaborators. So we're open source project. Uh, there's a couple people who are in this room who are actually on this list. And I probably put your name on here without permission. So uh, I'm sort of a do first, ask permission later kind of guy. Um, so uh, <clears throat> these are some of the people we've collaborated with, some with in very in depth, uh, some, some with less. But um, we're always looking for more collaborators. We're open source. We're looking especially for doctors who have uh, medical knowledge so we can make these, these, uh, these modules uh, more and more uh, realistic over time. Um, so people contributed modules. We're, we're collaborating on a bunch of research papers. There's people who are building authoring tools. We get a lot of bug fixes. Um, people are submitting grants to NIH. Uh, this is an interesting one. This guy uh, has a startup working on the homeless community and community health centers. And so we have a whole module in, of homeless. So Cynthia actually has a whole a cohort of, of homeless uh, people who go to their community health centers. Um, and then also we're working with some people who do, are very interested in uh, doing disease model validation. So these are some of our upcoming engagements. Uh, synthetic mass is going to be uh, serving a million patients at the at HL7 and AMIA's uh, Datathon in San Francisco. So we're very excited about that and, and proud to collaborate. And then we'll also be at uh, Health Data Palooza. And um, we're looking forward to sort of working with more people in the community who want synthetic data or would like to add um, their type of patient. If there's someone who's like, you know, I really need my epileptic patients in there, then come talk to us and we'll figure out a way to do that. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that uh, this is all open source, so this is built upon a lot of uh, history of open source projects um, that MITRE and, and, and other companies have sort of provided for. This is just a sampling uh, health data standards to CCDA. Uh, Crucible has some uh, fire client and fire models that we're using. Uh, the standard health record has some extensions in there about um, patient identification. And um, we're using uh, a, a fire server uh, called Go Fire from a project called Intervention Engine, which is a risk calculator. Um, so there's a bunch of resources. You can contact me. You can actually get all the code for Cynthia on GitHub right now. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, you can fork it. You can make pull requests. It's Apache 2. Um, synthetic Mass, you can browse it. You can do that right now. You can also access the Fire API. You can, um, you can, you can, um, you'll probably, it, during this, uh, after this meeting, if people start accessing, they'll probably take it down. Um, but, <clears throat> but, you know, it's there. There's going to be a million patients. We have a fortnightly um, teleconference, so people are interested in synthetic data or data at scale to test with. Um, you can join us there, and I'm sure these slides will be redistributed so you can join us. And as many people have said, we want collaboration. So uh, during the, uh, the refreshments tonight, please come and talk to me if you have any interest in uh, working on this project with us. And that's all I have. Thanks.